If there's one thing I've learned over the years as an income investor, it's that finding good high dividend paying stocks isn't always an easy thing to do. It's true that there's plenty of stocks out there that offer massive dividend yields, with many being over 10 or even 12% in certain situations, but if you do a little research into the performance of these companies, what you'll find in the majority of cases out there is a history of steady share price depreciation as well as a lot of dividend cuts over the years. While on your hunt for high dividend paying stocks, you'll probably encounter a lot of energy companies. These are companies that offer really high dividends depending on energy prices during a given period. These types of companies like royalty trusts and master limited partnerships can offer dividend yields of 15% or more as long as energy prices are really good. But if you look at their past dividend distributions, you'll see that there's wild swings in their dividend amounts. Because of this, many of these types of companies usually aren't worth holding on to for say 10 or 20 years at a time because there'll be periods when it yields 15%, but then in a couple years it might yield 1 or 2%. And on top of that, these companies can come with some pretty complicated tax situations. And then finally, there's a lot of mortgage REITs and business development company stocks that offer dividend yields of around 7-8% to or maybe a little more, but they offer virtually no growth over the years. Now I actually do like a lot of these stocks for their high consistent income, but every dividend portfolio should be allocated towards at least a little bit of growth. Here's just one example of this kind of stock, which is Gallup Capital, ticker symbol GBDC. It currently offers a 7.72% dividend yield, which is pretty nice, but if you look at the long-term performance of this stock, the share price is virtually flatlined over the years. When it first launched, it was trading at around $14.20 per share according to Yahoo Finance, whereas today, almost 12 years later, it now trades at $15.50 a share. And if you look at the dividend distribution history for this company, their dividend payments to shareholders have also been pretty much the same over the last decade. But today I want to take a look at one dividend stock in particular that I think has been moving in a pretty solid direction and I never see anybody else talk about them. It currently offers a massive dividend yield of over 12% and that's even been growing over the last few years. Their financials have really been improving recently, including both their book value and their net income. Additionally, it also has a good insider ownership percentage, which is another metric that I like to take a look at since a high insider ownership usually indicates that the board of the company is extremely optimistic about it. The stock that I'm referring to is for a company called Ready Capital Corporation, which is ticker symbol RC. Ready Capital with its subsidiaries operates as a real estate finance company in the United States. The company originates, acquires, finances, and services small business commercial loans and small business administration loans. They're also invested in mortgage-backed securities collateralized primarily by SBC loans and residential mortgage loans. Plus they offer bridge financing, which is another service that another mortgage read I've discussed on my channel before by the name of Arbor Realty Trust has been really successful at. Ready Capital was first launched in 2007, and as of the making of this video, their dividend yield currently sits at 12.10%. This translates into a quarterly dividend of 42 cents per share of RC. Their dividend amounts have fluctuated a bit since being launched. As you can see, the dividend was cut during late 2019 and during the 2020 pandemic plunge. But the good news is the company has been recovering pretty well since then, not just in terms of their income, but also in their dividend amount, which is now not only what it used to be before the pandemic, but they've actually increased it by an additional two cents, making it their highest distribution amount since 2013. Ready Capital is structured as a mortgage REIT. These are companies that finance income producing real estate assets across a wide range of sectors. REITs are a great investment for people who are looking for high dividends because REITs are required to pay out 90% of their earnings back to shareholders in the form of dividends. But definitely not all REITs, and especially all mortgage REITs, are good investments. But Ready Capital's business structure sets them apart from most mortgage REITs that I've come across. Even though they did have to reduce their dividend for a bit, according to this article, Ready Capital's mortgage portfolio performed so well that they didn't suffer any losses during the first wave of the pandemic. This company has really been growing pretty significantly within the last couple years as Ready Capital has been on a merger and acquisition spree. They've been acquiring several other companies within the MREIT and the financial sectors. Ten months ago, Ready Capital successfully merged with another mortgage REIT by the name of Anworth Mortgage Asset Corporation, which had been struggling after posting a $64 million loss in 2019, and they reduced their dividend distribution amount from $0.25 cents all the way down to just $0.05 cents per share. The merger resulted in a combined capital base for Ready Capital in excess of $1 billion and a well-diversified investment portfolio. In fact, if we look at their 2021 third quarter highlights, Ready Capital has been flexing its strength by acquiring or merging with other companies in order to grow their business. More recently, they're in the process of merging with Mosaic Real Estate Investors, which will increase their scale and diversification. Three months before that, they acquired Redstone, which gave Ready Capital more diversification within the multifamily real estate sector. Then you can see they also picked up Anworth, Knight Capital Funding, Owens, and ZFC. 
all of these mergers and acquisitions have resulted in significantly more diversification, which is good for a mortgage REIT because it helps reduce risk. 34% of their portfolio is made up of SBA originations, acquisitions, and servicing. And then 31% in SBC bridge originations, 14% in SBC fixed rate originations, and so on. When compared to other mortgage REITs out there, I'm convinced that Ready Capital is becoming one of the best in terms of diversification, largely due in part to all of these mergers and acquisitions with other companies. Here's a chart in one of their investor presentations that shows just how much better they've been performing when compared to their competitors. You might be thinking about the fact that most mortgage REITs out there invest in or issue residential or commercial mortgage-backed products and not so much in SBA or SBC loans like Ready Capital does. So what exactly is the advantage to investing in a mortgage REIT that holds SBA or SBC loans? For one thing, these loans that Ready Capital holds have the full faith and credit guarantee of the U.S. government in case that they fail, and they also guarantee timely payments. Another really key benefit is that these loans have a variable rate feature that has to do with interest rates that I'll discuss pretty shortly. According to Ready Capital's website, these loans have long maturities that range anywhere from 5 years to 25 years in order to meet whatever requirements that the small business might have. Ready Capital provides loans ranging anywhere from $350,000 to $5 million depending on the business. To really go in-depth on SBA and SBC loans would take a tremendous amount of time, but if you want more information on what these are and how they work, you can visit sba.gov and read more information on how small businesses apply for these kinds of loans and how companies like Ready Capital can pick and choose which businesses they want to loan money to. With all the recent talks of rising interest rates, this puts Ready in another really good position, since according to their financials, Ready Capital's loans are made up of 70% floating rate loans. This means that as interest rates rise, Ready Capital will be able to earn more money from their loan portfolio. There are risks involved for both MREITs and business development companies when interest rates rise though, although some companies that invest in floating rate loans earn more money from their investments, it can also mean that more borrowers will default on their loans. So there's definitely a fine line to walk in terms of interest rates for both of these kinds of businesses. A strong portfolio like Ready's has me believe that they're well positioned though. While researching this stock, I did want to look at one specific metric that I usually like to mention for a lot of companies I discuss, and that's their insider ownership percentage. But in the case for this company, I was skeptical about the percentage that fintel.io was giving me. This is the website that I use to find a stock's insider ownership percentage, which helps indicate how much faith the company's board of directors has in their own company. And according to Fintel, this company has an insider ownership percentage of 17.93%, which looked way too high in my opinion. I decided to cross-check this percentage on another website called Guru Focus, and according to them, the insider ownership is actually 1.3%. Now you can calculate this yourself by dividing the total number of shares owned by insiders divided by the total number of shares outstanding for a stock, but most websites that provide you with the number of shares owned by insiders will go ahead and provide you with this metric so you don't have to calculate it yourself. If you watched my video last week, we looked at Orchid Island's insider ownership percentage and Fintel was giving me a percentage of 0.36. On Guru Focus, it was giving Orchid Island a percentage of 0.31%, which is close to Fintel's. So for Ready Capitals, I don't know why it says 17.93%. I don't believe that's the correct number for insider ownership. I'm wondering if maybe all the recent mergers and acquisitions might have thrown off this number on Fintel. But still at 1.3%, this is higher than most stocks from what I've come across. As I previously mentioned, a high insider ownership percentage is a good way to determine how confident the board of directors is in their own company going forward. If a stock has a really low insider ownership percentage, such as with Orchid, and especially for a dividend stock, it's a signal that even the people who are higher up in the company don't really want to own their own stock. It could be that the board believes trouble lies ahead for the company, or they may not be able to sustain their dividends, but it also depends on how many shares are outstanding for a company, as well as the number of company insiders that exist. With that being said, in the case of Ready Capital, I think 1.3% is a pretty solid number and higher than average from what I've seen. In conclusion, I think Ready Capital is not only a solid investment, but I also think that as long as COVID doesn't significantly interfere with the economy anymore, I wouldn't be surprised if this company even raises their dividend sometime this year. I think that with the rising interest rates, this could really help set the company up for a good position in terms of net income, and even if they don't raise the dividend anytime soon, a 12% yield is still a great opportunity. With that being said, I do think that Ready Capital is worth considering for people who are looking for a good dividend. It doesn't look like the stock market as a whole is done with its volatility yet, so we'll have to wait and see how their share price performs going forward. Be sure to do your own research and due diligence before coming to your own conclusion, and don't forget to fully diversify your portfolio in order to reduce your exposure to risk. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. 
If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright everyone, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.